I'm a bit concerned about my food spend this year. So, so far this year, my food spend has come out at £96.04, which is an average so far this year, so four months, of £24.98 per month physically spent, spent and eaten on food. So there's a lot of food that I roll on. So I've explained before about how I pretty much only buy yellow stickers and things that I get free and discounted from cashback apps. And anything that I don't open, say maybe it was a pack of bagels and they went into the freezer and I didn't touch them that much, I roll on that money to the next month because if I open that product the next month, that then goes onto that budget, which means over the course of the year, it'll average out what I actually physically ate from a spending point of view. So yeah, so this year so far I have spent £96.04, pence, which averages out at about £24.98. Now, last year, for the whole year, I spent £120 on food. But I'm not sure if that's a blip, because the year before, which was 2022, I spent £230 on food. So I was thinking, well, this could all be cost of living crisis related. This could be the rise in food prices, because when food prices rise, the price of the discounts also goes up because the discounts are only a percentage of the full price. So what I've done, I've taken all of this year so far for 2024, so January, February, March, April, and I've looked at the same months last year to get a feel for whether I'm spending more money because I'm buying a lot more, or whether it's just because prices have gone up, or maybe um, the offset of things like gift cards that I get from doing surveys, uh, so gift cards that I get for supermarkets, which then Let's say I get a £10 Sainsbury's voucher and I go and buy £10 worth of food, that's basically to me £10 worth of free food because I haven't had to physically pay for it. So I knock that off of my spend. So that £120 I spent on food last year, don't forget there would have been a certain number of gift cards and I earn nectar points and all that sort of thing. So as an example of that, uh, let me see if where I've got the numbers. I did write them down here somewhere. Uh, what did I spend last year? So gift cards last year, I averaged earning supermarket gift cards uh, was £41.58. And this year, so far, it's averaging £42. So I'm on track to earn the same number of gift cards and other supermarket discounts um, from taking surveys and doing market research. There are also the cashback apps. So I use Green Genie, Shopmium and Checkout Smart. And last year, I averaged £14.05 of freebies from those uh, per month. This year, so far, it's £6.10. And I have noticed a big drop in the number of cashback items that I'm getting from those apps. Uh, normally, I will only buy a discounted item if it's something I normally use. If it's not something I normally use, I will only get it if it's free. So that means that I'm not buying things I wouldn't normally buy just to get a discount, which means I'm still spending money on things that I wouldn't normally buy. So I try not to fall for that trick. So at the moment, the cashback app freebies are down by about half, just over half. But that could all change later in the year. You might get nothing for months and then suddenly it all picks up again. So at the moment that's down. So then I had to look at my basic spend. So I have four sets of numbers which I, I'm using to compare this year so far with the same months, January, February, March, April last year. So it's the RRP price, which is the recommended retail price. So had I bought all those things at full price, this is what I would have spent. There is the, um, the cost that I actually spent 
on the actual eaten items as well and then there is the yellow sticker saving and then there's the cash back which I've already talked about so this time uh, last year for the first four months of the year had I bought everything at the shelf price I would have spent £82.61 per month this year that would have been £94 the cost to me so the yellow sticker items my average spend and eat spend was £14.59 this year it's £24.98 so my spend has effectively gone up £10 per month however my yellow sticker saving this time last year was an average of £29.96 per month saved on buying yellow stickers and this year so far it's averaging £50 a month now that might be because I've bought more bigger value items at discount there's been a lot of things like baking margarine which are about £3.25 a pack and I've been getting them discounted sometimes to as little as 50, 60, 70p so those are huge discounts um, so I'm not seeing a correlation between the price of food going up and what I am spending going up now the number of items I was buying this time last year was averaging 77 items per month this year it's 69 so far so theoretically I'm buying less items I am spending more money because those prices if I look at the shelf prices then the prices have gone up because it was 82 pounds last year and it's 94 this year but those yellow sticker discounts I would have thought would have made some sort of difference on that so I'm not entirely sure what's going on here um, I'm going to keep monitoring it through the year and I also need to decide because because I spent £120 on food last year that's the target I want to hit this year that is now impossible because I'm already at £96 so there's no way that I can only really spend about you know £14 or whatever for the rest of this year um, I don't feel like I have massively overbought in certain areas, I bought an excess of things. It's no more or less than I would normally do if I saw the offers. And a lot of the things that I buy that I would normally buy really does depend on what's available. So if I saw lots of baking margarine at a discount, I would stash up on it because it is something that I use on a reasonably regular basis and it will last a long time in the fridge as well packets um, things like that now I do also have quite a stash of nectar points at the moment so I get nectar points obviously from shopping from buying petrol I use two survey sites which pay in nectar points so there is nectar canvas and then there is the e-rewards. Now the e-rewards pays out when you get five pounds and it pays the points directly into your account. So five pounds is a thousand points. And I've already had two of those this month alone. But the uh, Nectar Canvas is quite good because you get paid two points for every survey that you try to do and get screened out of so you earn I mean you think oh my god it's only a penny why are you even bothering but I now have nearly 70 pounds worth of nectar points in my Sainsbury's account now that's a good stash of emergency money so let's say I don't get any other gift cards from anywhere else let's say I want to keep that food budget down I could just go and shop at Sainsbury's carefully for a while and not spend any money on actual food because I could just buy with nectar points so there is that so yeah I think that I'm going to have to rain down on the spending a bit the, the problem is as well that because I'm only buying yellow stickers it's a bit like being back in 2020 you go into the supermarket there's only so much on the shelf you buy what you can because you don't know it's going to be there the next time. Now, we don't have that now 
if you're paying for full price the shelves are full everything's there there's no there's no problems you're not going to starve to death but when you're only shopping for yellow sticker items you never know what's going to be there so if you go in and you see like loads of eggs that are discounted or loads of cereal or there's milk uh, or whatever else it is that that can either be a long-term staple in the cupboard or that you know that you need and will use like milk and I can put it in the freezer you're going to buy it all you're going to buy as much as you can realistically that you think you can use fresh vegetables I can blanch put in the freezer so none of these things are out of bounds and I did a, a food audit recently which shows the stash that I have of food I don't think it's that excessive to be honest with you it's across a broad range of items I've got everything from tea coffee cereal to flour uh, baking mixes, um, lots of tinned fish, um, tinned beans, things like that. So it's a range, it's not an enormous amount. And then I have two small countertop freezers, like the caravan style freezers, which are full, um, but everything in there is usable stuff. So part of me is tempted to use all of that and whittle it down and not spend any money. But then what happens if I whittle it down and then I don't see any discounts for four months. Because that is possible. That could happen. If there are lots of other people also trying to buy yellow stickers. And if you go in at the right time on any evening. They are queuing in front of the discounted shelves. Waiting for the chap to come along with the trolley with all the discounts on. And they're literally taking stuff out of his hands. And I cannot be bothered with that. I can't stand that. I think that's just... Blech. so I tend to go in a bit earlier and and take the things that are there that are cheap enough but I'm not going to stand in queue with a bunch of other people and fight over a half price sandwich it's vaguely humiliating and I don't really want to play that game I'm not that kind of person I'm not that first day at the sales person who goes in and fights over a TV because it's half price um so I don't play that game, so I try to go in at the right times where I know I can see discounts, but I'm not going to be stuck behind 10 other people all fighting for the same things. So maybe I am missing out on more discounts, but then there's only so much I need. There's only me. There's only me in the house. I don't need to buy literally everything it's ridiculous you know it's not like I'm starving to death for heaven's sakes so I'm going to keep an eye on this um, I mean we know that food prices are still rising they're rising slower but incrementally they are still rising there's a lot of things I don't buy anymore because they're just ridiculously overpriced I don't buy frozen chicken anymore I don't buy frozen mints the price per packet is an absolute joke I literally wait and see what I can get on a discount and I work with what I can get. So I don't go short of anything, but you do kind of have to be creative, which is fine because I scratch cook. So I'm used to going into the store, buying whatever I can get and thinking right now, how can I turn that into an interesting meal? And it's not difficult. It really isn't difficult. I'm not a fussy eater. I will pretty much eat anything. So give me a bunch of ingredients and I'll turn it into something. So I'm going to keep an eye on this. It may be that last year was just a weird blip because the year before I spent £230 which looks more like on track to what I will be on this year. So maybe last year was just a weird one and I just did really well. Um, I did have quite a lot of gift cards, quite a lot of cash back and maybe as the year changes I will get a lot more of those things and that will help balance out the year. So that's my little financial update is that I think I'm spending too much on food. You will probably look at my food bills for each month and think that me spending £24.98 a month on the food that I eat is insanely low. You have to put in the effort, you do have to put in the work for it, but I don't want to spend any more than that. Just so that greedy supermarkets can, you know, bank their profits and pay their CEOs. Uh, I'm not having it not willing to play the game I've really dug my heels in on a lot of things and I don't want to play retailers at that game 
so I try to make them work in my favour. So I need to think a little bit about what I'm going to do for the rest of the year. Um, it's easy for me to say, oh, I'm not going to buy X, Y, Z now because I have lots of it. And then you go into the supermarket on a Sunday morning and there's loads of it and you think, well, what if I don't see it again for six months? That's the fear of the hoarding mentality and I have been there before, so I am aware of it. Um, I don't know, I'm going to have to see how I get on. Uh, interesting one. <laughs> That's my weekend update.